This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 941, Learning to Trust, again, by Krista O'Reilly Davy DeGee of alifeinprogress.ca. Hello, everybody, and welcome back from the weekend. I'm your host here on ORD, Greg Audino, and it's uh, sort of a minimalist Monday here on ORD. For those who don't know, minimalism articles are shared Mondays on Optimal Living Daily and Optimal Finance Daily pretty regularly. But while today's post isn't, isn't so much about minimalism, it is about learning to trust again when we find that things are regularly taken away from us that we were counting on. So to me, it's boiled down to the idea of, can I get by and live fully in spite of having less of what I expected? So similar to minimalism. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? You be the judge. We're going to get into this post now and start optimizing your life. Learning to Trust, again, by Krista O'Reilly Davy DeGee of alifeinprogress.ca. I almost finished rebuilding my emergency fund, and then the two-year-old dishwasher stops cleaning. So, I hand wash and choose to appreciate how this happened at a slower time of year. And I realize I've sort of liked the calm, slow hand washing process. It's easy enough to trust through this. Two big backyard trees, shade and privacy trees, Trees that draw flocks of birds in the fall and winter, to my delight, must come down, as they are rotting and dangerous. The tree must be pulled from our emergency fund, almost but not yet completely recovered from our minivan dying last June. But I choose gratitude that we have worked to rebuild this fund in the first place. I go to visit my brothers and get a deep rock chip in my one-year-old windshield. Non-repairable. More money to replace a windshield when we had hoped for some fun money this summer and already booked plans. Discouragement creeps in, but we decide to try and push it off until fall, grateful that for the moment the chip and crack are not impeding our line of vision. My daughter needs an emergency surgery to remove an unknown mass in her jaw, hopefully nothing more than a bone cyst, but she is worried, and I leave the next day for Montreal. This was very sudden, there are fees attached and I'm supposed to go have fun after this. It's my first extended time away without family in over 20 years. I remind myself to breathe and silence the fearful voices in my brain. All will be well. She will be with her daddy who loves her, and I am so grateful that the surgeon books her in the day before my flight so I can be there. Why is it that there are seasons where everything seems to break all at once, or budgets are drained, or people get sick? Though there are yet other uncomfortable, bigger trust issues in our life right now, this smattering of examples I provided all happened within two weeks of each other. Nothing major, right? Separate, they are easy enough to handle, to brush off, to deal with in a mature and trusting fashion. But when I feel like I'm being picked at, deflecting one little irritation or scary unknown after the other, fear can begin to overwhelm. Defenses are weakened and I must choose my response. Faith or fear? Freedom or fear? I feel like I am entering yet another testing ground. I don't want it. It's not like I have had years of rest or peace under my belt that I should somehow be ready for a new challenge or a period of growth, as though I am in control of any of this. And yet I wrote not that long ago that I sensed change coming yet again. Darn it, why did I have to write that? I don't want to grow right now. I want to just enjoy summer and rest and connect and laugh and eat great food. Sweat in the Alberta sunshine, saunter through the majestic mountains of Banff, people watch along the cobblestoned and multicultural beauty that is Montreal, remain aware of the hate and fear and bombings in our world, but stay separate, compassionate, but untouched. But when pain or even inconvenience, because let's face it, much of what we deal with is simple inconvenience, When they visit our home, we must reaffirm our identity. Am I much afraid or acceptance with joy? And I am so grateful for the life-altering lesson learned in the Dark Valley four years ago. Joy and pain can coexist. Joy is a choice. And there really is no love without pain, but I will always choose love anyways. Trust is a choice. Surrender to the one who is faithful who I believe sees everything I am going through, who knows and cares about every detail of my life. That surrender 
is a choice. But surrender is also not about giving up, nor is it passive. It is hard work and involves taking personal responsibility and living with wisdom and walking in mercy and kindness even when I am fearful or angry. When I am so afraid of what lies ahead and afraid I might not have it in me to recover, I am learning to trust, again, or still. The journey is not yet complete. I am being formed and am yet becoming even as I watch my children become. I will focus on the next thing before me and then the next. Enjoy the sunshine and the gifts of today. Make the appointments, research when necessary, meet with doctors. I will tighten the belt to deal with unexpected expenses and be thankful that we have an abundance of food and people to love and a solid roof over our heads. I will practice breathing in the harder moments and remind myself that if this is my journey, then I have indeed been equipped for it. We forget sometimes, as my sister-in-law recently reminded me, that we have never been promised a life without struggle. No amount of budgeting, organizing, or trying to protect ourselves within our safe little bubbles can exempt us from loss or pain or inconvenience or plain old heartache. In this world, we will have trouble. There are people who abuse babies and countless who die of hunger, tsunamis and airport bombings. And all our personal struggles are training ground too, for knowing how to respond to these bigger world issues. If we fall apart when our favorite t-shirt is destroyed, wasps keep finding their way into the house, and the neighbor sprays pesticides on our garden, all also within the past couple of weeks, how do we offer a loving response to those affected by natural disaster or nightclub bombing? If we do not learn to choose peace or trust when our sense of safety is rocked at home, then how will we be people of courage who stand up for justice or push back against laws of tyranny and oppression in society at large? We won't, because we are too afraid, too needy of comfort to speak out. But I want to be a person of strength and courage. You probably do too. So right now, I choose trust. I let go of what I think my life should look and feel like at this moment and step into what is. Heart open, willing to listen and learn, remembering that life doesn't have to be perfect to be amazingly awe-inspiring, crazy beautiful. I am learning to trust again. You just listened to the post titled, Learning to Trust Again, by Krista O'Reilly Davy DeGee of alifeinprogress.ca. Such a great lesson from Krista today. I really appreciate this article from her and just the lack of expectation that she's trying to build for herself, and distancing herself from the feeling of being owed anything. You know, unfortunately, we all have these types of expectations to different degrees, and getting past those expectations is really only done in this space that Krista has described, the space in which all of the expectations are falling short. When things are going our way, it's not fortifying, but rather a period in which we become more fragile, we may not feel as though we have so many expectations in those periods, which feels like progress, but in actuality, we don't have expectations because the majority of them are being met, and we've fallen into believing that we're owed these things, or we, become, uh, we take these things for granted. And since we're not whining so much for more, we're not so needy. Well, rather, we are able to build resilience against these feelings of privilege when they are taken away from us little by little, and we find creative ways to alter our mindset, get by with less, and ultimately need less. So Krista has done a wonderful job of taking the high road here and learning in the right way. And that will do it for today, everyone. Thanks so much to our author, Krista, and thanks to all of you for joining and being willing to take that leap into trusting more, whether it be in your relationships with others or with yourself. Wishing you all a great rest of the day and hoping to see you all back here tomorrow for the Tuesday show where your optimal life awaits.